to another edition of the Wrestling Underground Podcast. We're bringing you live from the Thundercat Dome, because that's a thing. Holy hell, has this been a week of, of, of shenaniganry. I'm your host as always, Chad Porto. I am so tired, but the show must go on. I uh, didn't get a lot of sleep, neither here nor there. Uh, put in the OT today, so there, there's that. But I, I, I get to do a show with my good friend, my glorious co-host, Mr. Marcus Green. Marcus, how are you? Good, man. We hold each other up to get through it. We will, we will lean on each other like two leaning towers of Pisa attempting to walk through the Arc de Triomphe. It will be awkward. By the by, you know what I saw on, um, it's like WBNX, which is uh, our my TV in, in Cleveland. Uh, it was going on from 1 to 4 in the morning, and it was the 1998 Godzilla film. And Marcus, I will say this. I, I, I remember watching it all the way through as a kid, not minding it. I watched most of it. So I eventually decided, all right, I, I got to do other things before I go to bed. But I ended up uh, not hating what I saw. Is it possible that the Godzilla 1998 film is actually better than we think it is? Hmm. It's, it's, it's going to be a lingering question for some time, I think. I, I might have to sit down and rewatch it. Because it, it works. Like, plausibly speaking, like, the, there's like nothing in this movie that doesn't work. The French are trying to blow up Godzilla. Why? Because they don't trust the United States to do it. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, the, the the stuff got leaked. How did it get leaked? Uh, the, the worm guy let his girlfriend into his tent, even though he knew she was a reporter, because he wants to get some of that good, shall we say, schnooky. Uh, and then she betrays him because she's trying to not be a failure in her career because she's yet to become an on-screen reporter. So like it, it like it all kind of tracks, right? Like none none of it's like. Oh yeah, and like they needed gas, and they ended up on the corner that has a gas station that's still working. Oh, that's that's Deus Ex Machina. No, Godzilla '98 actually has kind of a coherent structure. I, whether or not you like the design of the monsters, or like you know, ah, that's that that's a for the debate, and like I, you know, we can have that discussion. But in terms of a structure of a story, I, it works. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think I think some of the best Godzilla stories oftentimes grounded in you know. Um, you know what happens when you know humans get too too comfortable and careless at the same time, and then stuff like that happens. Like a lot of like the whole concept of people not believing in the whole global warming thing. It's like <laughs> you don't believe like the simplistic idea that ice melts. Like really, you don't think nothing can become of that when when half the planet is, is majority of the planet is water. You don't think that's a it, it's it's ridiculous. But I think when you ground something like Godzilla and something like that, like all that radiation and, and, and chemical pouring and, and then you eventually get something like that and then all of a sudden you can't deal with it because historically America has, has you know made a fetish out of wanting to turn something like that into a weapon a la every Hulk movie <laughs> something that that monster did into a weapon it, it, it tracks and China's like and or Japan's like no no we don't need it kill it like we can't trust these greedy bastards to get it done and there's also, right. there's also that, that note, I forgot to mention, that it was actually the French nuclear tests that may have created Godzilla. So they feel a, a obligation to make sure that the Americans fulfill their, their duties, if you will. So it's just like, it's all around yeah. like a solid flick. Like, maybe. I've, I have to watch it all the way through because I was flipping back and forth. But I was coming back to it quite often. So, I mean, that, that, that says something. Yeah. And why are we talking about Godzilla instead of the Thunderdome? Because Godzilla 1998 is better than the fucking Thunderdome. <laughs> I, um, oh, geez, Marcus, this was, uh, when I saw this on, on the test, what was it, last Wednesday? It was bad. Mm -hmm. And then I saw it on Friday, and it, it looked even worse. It's just, and, and, like, everything that you thought would happen, happened, especially during SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. like, people falling asleep. I was half expecting to see <laughs> Marcus up on there. He has a tendency of falling asleep sometimes while watching this programming. <laughs> sure. We saw a uh, Crispin Wall photo, which... Tackless. We saw a Fire Velveteen Dream shirt, which I mean, when you say you've done a investigation on Dream 
And then everyone who, who reported or, or claimed to have uh, the illegal interactions with him, so to speak, or, or, or were victims of his, so to speak, are saying they never called us. I have to ask what kind of investigation he actually committed or, 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 or sure. you know, perpetrated. But then again, this is also the same company that fired Pat Patterson for his alleged involvement in a child sex ring back in the 80s and then brought him back like six weeks later. So, like, I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Fans might have to end up calling in Mr. Inc. I sense a velveteen scheme afoot. <laughs> who who was the purple people eater? Velveteen dream. And I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids and that deranged puppy that clearly has rabies. Ruggy, I got bit by a raccoon. I can swing uh. Scoob, you got the foaming mouth. Poor Scoob. Rip. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jinkies! Scooby's frothing at the mouth. That's how I've been watching this. I was having an epileptic seizure. I was going. It's no. <laughs> this is so bad. And they're like, well, it's, it's you really know, it. the NBA is doing it. And Marcus, to that I say, the NBA has like the most muted tones on their screens, and like you can't see anything behind them. And there's only like a hundred of them at best. Yeah, yeah. Also, also, it's oftentimes they forget to go to them. Yeah. Like they did to put the camera on them because I, I watched those games. I'm like, I then they went to them like, oh yeah, they're doing that. Like they 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 got them there to make them feel better about it. Like the 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 players nor the people watching at home that's not in the the screens. They don't care. They just want to see the people play. Mm-hmm. So, but WWE, it's funny. It's like now the fans, because now now that's the gimmick of the thing. It's like okay, who's gonna wear a clan robe this week? So, you get caught on camera. so that's one of the things that happened. One of the streamers that got in decided to th- show footage from a YouTube clan rally from years ago. And uh, because the WWE doesn't really have a clue what the fuck they're doing, it got it in. And like this is this is part of the problem of doing this. Like you cannot have a live kind of reaction of, of these fans watching this product because, you know, you need to have a delay of sorts. You know, the whole reason why, because like, technically speaking, when you watch live television, you're not watching live television, technically. You're watching it on about a five to seven second delay. And this is because Justin Timberlake and um, Janet Jackson conspired to have Tittygate back in, what was that, 2002, 2003? So ever since then, live TV's always been on a bit of a, uh, a, a delay. So that means there's already de- a delay in the programming. And on top of that, there's got to be some type of lag function with, with these views. So like, I don't even know how, you know, we might be watching stuff that they're just seeing live for the first time eight seconds after it happens. Who knows? So there's no way you can really jump in, circumvent, and, and block people or, or augment their screens until it happens. Someone, I think it was Russ, excuse me, I think it was Ali from Russell Talk, said something to the effect like, the only way you can really curtail this is if you um, have everyone kind of uh, like put in your, like your credit card info or something like that and, and make them pay like a small nominal fee of like 50 cents or what have you. So that way, if this does happen, you can um, either penalize them or, or you could block them via the credit card number, which is a lot more accurate and... and um, kind of safe going compared to like a, a, a VP, like a, a, your, your IP address, which you can just change with it with a VPN. So that might be the way yeah. to go in the future or, and here's a thought, I don't know, just me spitballing, maybe don't do it. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's really no point. It's not like you can pre-screen these people. Cause it's like I said, at this point, I feel like it is a thing where a lot of people are not caring because everybody's watch it anyway, but a lot of people are getting in this, exclusively to be like, oh, okay, I'm going to get on TV, I'm going to be seen, what's the stupidest thing I can do? Because the people that they want um, to be in this Thunderdome thing, for the most part, they've eroded away with shitty uh, uh, creative. Mm-hmm. So you got to be basically hosting a bunch of trolls every week for the most part. Or a bunch of people who are literally just, this is a part of their routine, but they literally have life and they come here last minute and they're falling asleep mostly from an exhausting week but the majority from you know 
stuff is boring. They've seen this match 50 different times, uh, like 40 different ways. So, you know. You could either watch, you know, Randall Keith, Randall Keith, Keith, Randall Keith Orton taking on Keith, Randall Keith, 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 Randall Keith Lee. Or you can go watch Kawhi Leonard and Luka Doncic have the playoff series of the ages. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so, like, what would I rather watch? Keith Lee versus Randall Keith Orton? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> like, Keith Lee's a fine dude. Don't get me wrong. But I don't want to watch Randy Orton against anyone. Like, you could be like, it's going to be Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton. And Alexa Bliss is going to have to wear see-through gear. And I'm still going to be like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I will watch nothing with Randy Orton. Nope. Nada. Nunca. Yet. <laughs> It's just weird because I, I would imagine even if some people like I would imagine people even if they put that safeguard in place with the credit card, I I know it's a bunch of people like the fifty cent would be worth it for me to um, get on here and um, like put this big ass sign and say put Benoit in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> like it's to some people like it's worth it to like the the show like porn for however long they can get it on screen or something like that. It's worth it to people at this point. Like people would rather. Um, be famous for being trolled and then, you know, to watch something I, like I said, they can witness anyway. It's all about the concept of being on TV. Then the people who really want to be there, it's like, we, I'm sorry for you, but, you know, it's not... Oh, uh, that whole being a part of it is just that, that the idea, that concept is, is far more uh, grandiose than the actual execution of this thing, because it's, it's, like I said, it has to be taxed and you can't watch however many people they be trying to pack in on that screen and then you have to police everybody okay that person sleep so do i kick them out and let somebody else in and now this person that's wide awake is wearing a clan robe <laughs> and it's like oh it has to be a shitty job to have the sleeping black guy next to the to the awoken white clans member that's a uh, that that's an allegory right there i think the thing you do is make them sign some type of agreement that says and, and not in like the boilerplate kind of like un, like right there at the top of the signing you agree that if you are banned for anything offensive that you agree to a five hundred thousand dollar fine mm. i don't know legally speaking i'm sure I, i'm sure if you if you're forced to sign a contract you can obviously get away with that but if you're forced to sign a contract and and, and to get into this that might curtail a lot of things, but then again, you'll still have people who like may not believe that it'll happen. Because there's a lot of people mm-hmm. who pirate pay-per-view streams still, who go to court for pirating pay-per-view streams, and people like know that this happens. Websites get taken down all the time. You know, co- copyright laws are enforced, yet people still do it. So, I don't even know if that would be a good enough deterrent. But like, they got to do something because you cannot. Because like a- after SummerSlam. Like, here's, like, the time frame. Like, zero seconds to 13 and a half minutes after SummerSlam ended, all I saw was, holy shit, with the exception of the main event, this was, like, the best show, the best book show in years. And then, like, 13 minutes and zero one seconds, it became, did you see Benoit on the Klan rally during SummerSlam? So, like, they didn't have the stretch of time they, they should have had for having a successful event. And that's bad. So maybe it'll be worth it. Like, hey, if you if you pull this shit again, like we will fucking find your ass a thousand dollars, and if you don't, you know, pay up, we'll come for you. And like, that seems to be the only way that you can go about it. Now, if you fall asleep, I don't think that should be anything punishable. But you know, I you know, it should say in, in the in the stu- you know the contract that if you fall asleep at any time or you leave your camera for an extended period of time, we have the right to remove you from the Thunderdome experience. You know, that way you can just, you know, like you said, keep bringing people in as needed. Um, But then again, uh, what I really find funny is that everyone who is watching the Thunderdome is pretty much their audience anyway. So, like, good job. (laughs) You have all of your active fans watching the show. Kudos. Fucking terrible. But, yeah, Marcus, they can't afford to have another night like SummerSlam where they have just the most insane things happening. Which kind of sucks because I'm all for people wearing, you know, Fire Velveteen Dream shirts. He's kind of gross. Yes. Oh, what you really don't do, and this could really be, again, um, in, in 
Washington legal ter- legal territory, depending on how things are set up. But imagine if they're having like a back to back like women's matches, and some a hole is putting up somebody's nudes that leaked. Oh God, that would be awful. Oh, that would not be good. <laughs> 